In this church is what most organists tend to agree, one of the finest organs in the country. And I can't quite believe I'm going to say this, but I'm going to sample it. Over the past four years, I've built up an amazing collection of some of the best sample sets, which are played on the amazing BIS organ. And guys, this is like a dream, and I absolutely love it. It's also allowed me to see and hear what makes the best sample sets sound so good. And last year, I felt ready to sample my own organ, the 1850s J.W. Walker organ of Romsey Abbey. The feedback that we received about the Romsey Abbey sample set was fantastic. And it made me so much more excited about coming into a space like this for me to record my dream organ. Welcome everyone to St. Mary Redcliffe. an astonishing four-manual Harrison and Harrison organ from 1912. It's often said that the most important stop on any pipe organ is the acoustic in which it sits. And when Queen Elizabeth I visited this very church in 1574, she said that it was the goodliest and the most famous parish church in England. And it's easy to see why. So just what makes this organ one of the best in the country? This organ has 71 speaking stops. Doesn't matter. This organ has two 32 foot reeds. Doesn't matter. This organ has three sets of string families. Doesn't matter. And it also has an amazing tuba. Don't matter. What does matter? is the way all of those stops come together, the character of this organ. This organ, you know, was installed in 1912 by Harrison and Harrison, but not just any Harrison. It was installed by Arthur Harrison, the great Arthur Harrison. And what makes this organ so special is that since it was installed in 1912, it hasn't really changed. Just look at this console. Isn't it one of the most beautiful English consoles you've ever seen? This is exactly why I modelled my console on a Harrison and Harrison. If you think about the organs of Liverpool Cathedral, Worcester Cathedral, Llandaff Cathedral and Salisbury Cathedral, the organs are housed in two chambers on the north and south side of the cathedral. The same can be said about St Mary Redcliffe. We have over here on the north side, the grate and the swell and some pedal stops. And then on the south side, we have the echo and solo division, which I'll get more into later, and the choir, which actually sits on the lower level. And some more pedal stops as well. On this side, the south side, is a very loud pedal stop. So let's have a look down here at these pipes. In this corner <laughs> of the uh, case is the double Ophiclide 32, and it's massive, absolutely massive. If you think it might be too massive, well then I've got good news for you, because there's another, <laughs> there's another one. So if we walk down here, past the Verges Vestry. Up here, we have the swell box and the shutters on this side and also shutters up here as well. And in there is the double trombone on the pedal. Yes, the 32 foot reed on the pedal 
is enclosed. One quirk of this organ is how this swell is separated into two locations. The main body of the swell is actually over here on the north uh, side of the church. But the foundation stops and the principal chorus is over there on a division called the Echo Division, which is playable on the fourth manual. So all of the, um, the swell reeds are in a separate box here. And then the, the chorus is over there. And you can bring it down via a solo to swell and have them all together. And the effect is you can actually open the chorus before the reeds. The solo strings, or the, should I say the swell strings, the echo strings, are playable on the fourth manual. But then there are also some very fiery um, strings on the, on the swell, which I suppose are the solo strings, really. These are massive. And of course you have um, the octaves as well, so the octave and sub-octave. This organ is blessed with some beautiful orchestral reeds, so we have uh, an, a beautiful oboe, which would be good for thronk, which is of course on the echo, which is up here. But then there's an orchestral oboe as well. And the core anglais at 16 foot. And then a clarinet at 16 foot as well. There's also another clarinet down on the choir, which is at normal eight foot. Of course, I can't talk about this organ and not mention the tuba. Or the great reeds. Or how about the, the two pedal 32 foot reeds, starting with the quiet one, which is in the swell box. I can imagine that being very effective in psalm accompaniment. And then the other end of the scale, which is on the south side, and the pearl trombone is on the north side, is the double opiclide. And both together are a real treat. can't wait to get stuck into this recording. Over the coming month I'm going to be sat at this console for many hours. I'm going to record every single pipe, I'm going to record every single noise, and I'm going to record everything about it to capture the whole organ, including its ambience. So I'm going to have microphones really close to the pipes and I'm also going to have microphones really far away and that will allow you to Find a balance that works best for your preference. The Romsey Abbey sample set featured new and innovative ideas, um, previously unseen on other organs. And Jerry Martin and I are already talking about even newer ideas and innovations that are previously unseen on any other instrument. We're going to be very busy over the coming months and we're not going to release it until it's perfect. And in fact, it's my intention to make this the best 
sample set of an English organ available to date. You can hold me to that <laughs> and you can let me know whether we've achieved that or not. When you can buy this organ just before Christmas this year, the best thing about this organ is it's tutti, is the full organ sound. And the perfect piece to show off that um, full artillery of reeds, including both pedal 32 foot reeds, is Maurice de Rufle's choral variations on Veni Creato. And here's the final variation from that suite. 